Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about a vetiver fragrance that I have really grown to love. It's this one right here, Le Ladon from Jacques Fat. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the presentation. Like always, I'll break the fragrance down, you know, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go ahead and talk about the pricing and then we'll go into the presentation. This is a niche fragrance house, but it's not really all that expensive. At full retail, you can pick this one up for about $130 for this size right here, 100 mils. It's actually 111 euros, but as of this video, that equals out to about 130 bucks. So at about $130 roughly for a 100 mil size bottle, full retail, that's actually really good. Now the question is, is the quality of what you get worth that 130 bucks? So let's go ahead and check out the presentation first and then the scent. Well, first up, the box. I do like this box. It's a little bit simple, but it's really nice, really well put together. You've got the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, the size, the concentration, all of that right here on the front at the top. You have the Jacques Fott logo, which you'll also find right there on the front of the box. Nothing doing on the sides. On the back, you have the name of the perfumer, and at the bottom, Jacques Fott Parfums, 1946. And then on the bottom of the box, you're going to find your badge code, your barcode, and your ingredients. The badge code here is 8L281. Box opens up like so, and then the bottle We'll sit down inside of there. And here we've got the bottle, which is really vaguely, vaguely reminiscent to something like the uh, Dior Private Line fragrances, something along those lines. You've got the Jacques Fott logo again. You have a sticker right in the middle of the bottle that is set down a little bit into the bottle. And it's got the name of the uh, fragrance, name of the house, a little info on the back as well. One slight annoyance that I have with the sticker is that ever since I got this on the back where the sticker ends, it is constantly coming up. So I have to keep kind of like rubbing it, <laughs> rubbing it back down like, oh no, please don't come up and rip. So anytime I get this bottle out, these uh, two parts on the back, the stickers are like working their ways up. They're kind of butterflying their way open and I have to just Give it a rub. It's a little bit of a minor annoyance, but over time there's the possibility that, you know, that won't rub back down and then the sticker is gonna kind of rip and it's, it's not gonna look very good. Now, at the front of the bottle, it does say Jacques Fat Parfum in the bottle right there. It's a nice look. On the bottom, not too much going on. Your batch code is in ink on the side of the bottle. On the top of the cap, you have the Jacques Fott logo. It is a heavy cap and it is a magnetic cap. As you can see right there, it's a pretty strong magnet. Yeah. One thing with this, it's a little bit different than some other magnetic cap bottles that I have where you would twist it and then the cap would kind of pop up. You know, it snaps into place in a specific place. Um, some Chanel bottles are like that. Uh, this one though, you can just, you can freely spin that cap. Got a big honking atomizer on there. Let's go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys. There we go. I did kind of <laughs> kind of like a weird spritz before I did the sprays. Show that in a slow motion. Okay, so this fragrance, like I said at the beginning, is a vetiver fragrance and I love vetiver. Vetiver is one of my favorite notes. If you do not like vetiver, this fragrance is not for you. Period, hard stop, that is it. You can go, it's not for you. If you like vetiver though, or if you love vetiver, yeah, this one's a good one. This does what I love for fragrance to do, which is presents vetiver in a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different facets. It has three different types of vetiver here. You've got Haitian vetiver, Javanese vetiver, and bourbon vetiver. And you've got one in the top, one in the mid, one in the base. So you're gonna get that vetiver from the opening to the dry down. So in the opening, you've got green mandarin and ginger, which mixes together with that Haitian vetiver right off the top. So initially, it's not really all that smoky. It's a little bit clean, actually, and green. So it's got this kind of grassy edge to it. There's also this really pleasant sweetness that lurks behind everything in the opening in the first part of the mid. 
It's the ginger, the mandarin orange, and the raspberry leaf all combining together and kind of working together with that Haitian vetiver in the top. Once you head into the mid, things are a little bit smoother because when you do very first spray this one on, it's, it's pretty aggressive. Not in a bad way, it's just it's strong when you first spray this on. So once you head into the mid, it's kind of taking a step back, gathered itself a little bit smoother, a little bit more rounded, and not quite as bright. It becomes more dry, grassy, woody for me in the mid, and that fruitiness, that little touch of fruitiness that I said was lurking behind everything in the opening, once you hit the mid, it has stepped back a bit and it's not really as noticeable. There's also a tobacco note in here. It's not really like a, you know, a sweet pipe tobacco, anything like that. It's actually more reminiscent of maybe the way tobacco was used in Sycamore from Chanel, a little bit like that. And even though through the mid, this one does have that dry, sort of grassy, woody feel, it also has a little bit of airiness to it. And that's just the way this fragrance comes across. It sort of floats off your skin and you pick up wafts throughout the day. It's never really heavy and dense on your skin. It doesn't just sit there like a log, you know, sit there flat on your skin or, or just constantly project like a monster choking people out within 50 feet or anything like that. It, it has this airiness to it where it just, sort of gently wafts off you and makes this little vetiver based scent cloud. And even though this fragrance is not what I would consider a fresh fragrance in the way a lot of people would consider a fragrance fresh, which is usually something like, uh, you know, big aquatic blast and really fresh spices and citrus and things like that. Even though it's not that type of fragrance, it does have a little touch of freshness to it in the opening through the mid. And once you hit the dry down here, the vetiver starts to come across more smoky. So you get this semi-smoky, dry, little bit dusty, sort of woody vetiver. You also get a little touch of earthiness from patchouli in here, but it's not a really heavy handed dose of patchouli. Vetiver is still the focal point. It's that way the whole way through. Like I said at the beginning, in the top, in the mid, in the dry down, vetiver is the focal point. It's just the patchouli in the dry down becomes a little more noticeable than it was in the mid and gives you that touch of earthiness. As far as seasons go, this one's going to be a little bit better suited for fall and winter, potentially also spring. As far as uh, daytime or nighttime use for me, either one. Vetiver based fragrances are super versatile and this one is no different, so daytime or nighttime either. It is office safe, though I would not go super heavy on the trigger because this is the type of vetiver fragrance that if you go really heavy, it's going to have a wallop to it. And that could be a little off-putting for some people. So office safe, yes, but wear it in moderation, I would say. You could also easily wear this one formally or casually, either one. Let's talk about performance. It seems to be a little hit or miss. Some people haven't had as good luck as I have with this one. Longevity, seven plus hours for me, so nothing to complain about there, and that is off skin. In terms of projection, best in the first hour or so, and then it starts to sag into that that section I talked about earlier, where it's sort of airy, like you catch wafts of it here and there, and it, it kind of just floats around you, but it doesn't really choke people out, which for me is a good thing. So sometimes when I'm wearing this one, it will appear that it's not there anymore. Like I'm not really smelling it very well, and I'm like, mm, I think it's, I think it's gone, and then I'll catch just a quick waft of it. That one is going up with some of my other heavy hitter vetiver fragrances, and for the price, I think it's a steal. But like I said earlier, and I do mean this, if you do not like vetiver, I don't think this is gonna be the fragrance you know, to, to change your mind and have you just go, oh, you know what? It all makes sense now. Everything makes sense in my mind vetiver-wise. The stars have aligned and now I love vetiver. No, I don't think that'll happen. But if you enjoy a really nice vetiver that has multiple facets of the way vetiver can be used, both sparkling and bright and clean and effervescent, and at the same time, smoky, a little bit earthy, woody and dusty, yeah, check this out, it is good stuff. So that is my take on this one. I'll leave a link in the description to their website in case you wanna check this one out or any of the other fragrances that the house has. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I will see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.